Around 8 p.m. on Saturday, April 27th, 1946, Alton Collier boarded the Coronado Ferry to San Diego. He never reached the other side. His body washed up on the Coronado shore a week later. What happened to Collier depended on which newspaper you read. White-run papers didn't use the word man in their headlines about Collier, but Negro, suspect, and knife assailant. In their accounts, Collier, 26, got in a heated argument with two 19-year-old Navy men, Freddie Johnson and Otis Gilbert. Then Collier drew a knife and slashed Johnson's arm. So Gilbert confronted Collier with boat hooks, and Collier leaped over the railing into the bay. Ferry crew dropped a life raft, then kept going, even though Collier screamed for help after he hit the water. This detail bothered Coronado historian Kevin Ashley. You know, why would a guy jump into the water and drown if he, did, if he knew how to swim? If he didn't know how to swim, why would you jump in the water? Something didn't add up about it. So Ashley searched black run newspapers and found a very different headline. Drowned man victim of gang up attack by white Navy men. In this account, witnesses saw sailors calling Collier the N-word crowding him toward the railing, striking him with a boat hook, and Collier falling overboard. The white press um, basically fed what I believe was a prevailing narrative of African American men as aggressive, and the black press um, portrayed him as a victim. In the months leading up to Collier's death, race relations were boiling in San Diego. African Americans were picketing businesses that wouldn't hire them. So Collier's story didn't surprise Ashley. He believes the ferry's Navy passengers closed rank. They basically agreed what was the story. Um, then, you know, one of the guys had a so-called slash, which at first was portrayed in the press as he lost so much blood, and later on it was, it was just a sort of a scratch. The coroner declared Collier's death a suicide. Collier's wife, Georgia, sued the ferry company. So imagine this 23-year-old, 24-year-old African-American woman with a um, primary school education taking on the Spreckles company. Her deposition paints a different picture of Collier, a cement worker and union man at the Hotel Del Coronado. He never drank, had asthma, wore glasses, and importantly, He didn't own a knife. He didn't own a razor. Georgia Collier told the lawyer, quote, he had no temper whatsoever. That Saturday, he got off work before noon, helped her with the dishes and cooking, planted flowers, then boarded the ferry to pick up tailored trousers for himself and a coat for Georgia at a downtown department store. They were supposed to go dancing that night, but he never came back. His glasses were later found on the ferry deck, broken. She maintained he was murdered but she never got her day in court. So, um, and eventually the case was dropped. Georgia Collier never saw a dime. A week later, the ferry company sold for $5.5 million. The sailors were never charged. Ashley's research prompted the Equal Justice Initiative to declare Collier's death a lynching. SDSU anthropology professor Seth Malios says San Diego could lead a national reckoning with the broader definition of lynchings. You immediately think of these images from the Deep South and, and you think of hangings. We immediately link it, but that's not what this is. Lynching is about people taking the law into their own hands, there being no representation and terrorizing an individual. Yvette Porter Moore is a San Diego genealogist. She wants accountability. I would like to see the county of San Diego change his death certificate. On the anniversary of Collier's death last year, around 8 p.m., Moore and Ashley boarded the Coronado Ferry. I just wanted somehow to say, like, I know what happened to you. Um, maybe nobody else knows, but I know. Collier didn't get to see the flowers he planted that day bloom. On the waves he was left to drown in, Moore and Ashley sprinkled fresh petals. Say his name, Alton Collier. A public ceremony will be held this summer. Katie Heisen, KPBS News.